a look at the Montgomery County Historical Society's history. Stick around. Hi, I'm Gail Street and welcome to Paths to the Present. The Montgomery County Historical Society was born towards the end of the Second World War and has been going strong ever since. In all the years that we've jointly produced this show, we've never done a history of the society. Well, that's about to change. A summer intern recently created an orientation video for MCHS, which we will see in a moment. But first, let's do the history quiz. Do you know what this is? About the size of a fly swatter, this kitchen tool dates to the early 1900s. It has a wooden handle that supports a set of two independent wires with clover-like shapes at the ends. Think you know what it is? Stay tuned. I'll give you the answer at the end of the show. In the summer of 2012, what started as a student project turned into a 20-minute film about the Montgomery County Historical Society. It will be used to orient visitors and train volunteers for years to come. On today's show, we present a shortened version of that film, which was produced by Kathy Grubman and narrated by Ben Church. Let's watch. The Montgomery County Historical Society, or MCHS, is located in Rockville, Maryland, the county seat. It supports two museums, a research library, and education and outreach programs. With more than 1,000 members, the Historical Society is a private, non-profit organization that relies mainly on grants and donations to operate. As director of the Montgomery County Historical Society, I act as the liaison between the board of directors and the staff, assist the board in developing policy, implement their directives, uh, help craft the budget, raise funds, and act as the ambassador to county government and the public at large. Many counties have historical societies and they all do great work, but I haven't found one that's more active than MCHS. Maybe about 200 or so lived in the entire town of Rockville. The MCHS was founded in 1944 by Lily Moore Stone, who was very active in civic organizations she was also a respected businesswoman who operated a stone quarry for more than 30 years. Mrs. Stone also designed the county flag, erected road markers of historical sites, and at age 91 began publication of the Montgomery County Story, which is still in print. The initial goal of Mrs. Stone and her friends was to preserve an agricultural history in a landscape that was rapidly changing, but they were also interested in collecting artifacts. Meetings were held at her house in Potomac, but the members soon discovered they needed more space. After years of looking for a permanent museum, in 1965 the organization moved to the three-acre Bell Dawson site. It is owned by the city of Rockville and operated by MCHS. You'll also learn about the people who lived in the house and what they did. Besides the Bell Dawson house, the campus includes the Stone Street Museum of 19th Century Medicine. So the 19th century would be the 1800s. The Jane C. Sween Research Library and the Society's administrative offices. The Bell Dawson House, circa 1815, is an outstanding example of the federal style architecture. On the National Register of Historic Places, the house was built by Upton Bell, the clerk of the court. This was a fancy residence that reflected its owner's wealth and stature in the community. But it also became a house of ordinary people. The three Bell daughters lived in the home for their entire lives. Later, the house passed to cousins, the Dawsons. Over the generations, more than a hundred people resided there, including family, relatives, slaves, servants, and boarders. The house remained in the family until 1946, when it was sold to the Davises, who updated and restored it. In 1965, Mrs. Davis sold it to the city of Rockville, 
who in turn invited MCHS to make it their museum. It's now both a historic house museum and a gallery for changing exhibits on the county's history. Visitors are invited to learn what life was like way back when. We're looking at history, we're looking at um, how people keep themselves entertained and generally just comparing uh, then with now for the purpose of writing about it. Um, my favorite part about this museum is the dollhouse because it's really cool and it's kind of like a mansion. That's right. Dollhouses, toys, musical instruments, artwork, ceramics, kitchen wares, farming implements, and a large collection of 18th and 19th century furniture are on display. The collection consists of more than 10,000 objects. So as director of collections, I'm in charge of our artifact collections, all 10,000 plus um, artifacts. When new donations come in, we catalog them, we write all the paperwork down to make sure everything is, is above board and legal enter them into our database, and, and house them. That's the term for storage. Oh, these are fairly well cataloged, yay! I am a master's student at George Washington University in museum studies, and I'm doing a volunteer collections management internship here at the Society, which basically means I am inventorying and then cataloging all of the artifacts in the basement storage area. Box from, it's four, from shelf V3. So this looks like a nice syringe set. And I do a lot of research on what we have, um, going out and looking for new things, dealing with people who want to donate things to us. Um, so we don't take everything that's offered, but we do take a lot, of, a lot of new things in every year. So it's always a surprise. There's always something fun to open a box and say, oh, is that what that looks like? That's snazzy. I think that's Shirley Temple's. Is that a raincoat? It's a little raincoat. Oh it's a raincoat. <laughs> that's cute. See, we think American Girl dolls are new, but not, not particularly. We still had to make sure Shirley was well dressed. Many African Americans lived here throughout the history of the house. We have two rooms in the house set up as slave quarters. Um, we have it set up for how we think it would have looked during their time living in the house. After slavery was abolished, um, Margaret Bell, the owner of the house at the time, sold lots of plots of land and gave plots away at the far end of the property, which formed the nucleus of the African-American neighborhood here in Rockville. Next door to the Bell Dawson house is the Stone Street Museum of 19th Century Medicine. This one-room doctor's office was built in 1850 for Dr. Edward Stone Street of Rockville. He served as one of the town's doctors until his death in 1903. The office was originally located in the yard of a Stone Street home at the corner of Monroe Street and Montgomery Avenue. In 1972, the structure was donated and moved to its present location. Uh, to care of the estate. During the 51 years of his practice, medical knowledge and technology underwent many radical changes, and the Stone Street Museum offers changing exhibits to explain that. Clarence Hickey is one of the museum's interpretive docents. It shows through the artifacts how the practice of medicine changed from about the middle of the century until the turn of the, the 1900s, and how the, how the practice of medicine uh, went from heroic procedures and bleeding and things like that to being very scientific and biological, and how that happened, the daughter of modern medicine, the last half of the 1800s. Also on the property is the Jane C. Sween Research Library. Converted from a 1940s garage, this library offers extensive reference and archival resources. We answer inquiries, myself and volunteers, uh, field questions regularly from the local newspapers, from the Washington Post, from various news stations about topics of county history. Uh, we have a space in the library for several researchers and often it is a very busy place to be, not at all the quiet, typical research library because we're here to help you do your research for Montgomery County history and Montgomery County families. The collection includes more than 5,000 books, hundreds of church and cemetery records, family histories, maps, land plats, newspapers, school yearbooks, and more than 7,000 photos, slides, 
glass plates, and daguerreotypes, some dating back to the Civil War. All sorts of places in the county feature images from the Montgomery County Historical Society. Various commercial uh, companies come to use images to decorate restaurants, uh, banks, nursing homes, uh, business establishments. The library is named for the Society's founding librarian, Jane Sween. Nice to meet you. Glad to meet you, Jane. Nice to meet you. Who, although retired, stays connected as a volunteer. Well, the library was originally located in the on the second floor of the Bell Dawson House, and we sat around the table and pushed papers around. Uh, it consisted of uh, probably one file cabinet and a small bookcase. But uh, books are heavy, and they found uh, cracks in the ceiling of the parlor below. So they said we must move to a first floor location. So we took over what had been the garage built in the 1940s and moved the library there. People from all over use this library to uncover all kinds of county history. I am looking up historic African-American settlements in Montgomery County, Maryland. Um, it's through a project called Breaking New Ground, so we're collecting oral histories from these, um, from the descendants of these farmers and black landowners. I'm here to research my family history. Oh, that I found out about uh, being a descendant of uh, Edward IV, um, King of England through his uh, lover. So you're royalty, royalty. Yeah, we're talking blue blood here, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I say a large percentage are doing genealogical research. Others varies from tracing an old house to their community, to their church, and so there are various reasons for looking into the history of the area. The Montgomery County Historical Society has a simple mission, to collect, interpret, and promote the history, heritage, and culture of Montgomery County, Maryland, all in an effort to connect residents to their local history. The Montgomery County Historical Society plays an important role in telling that story of local history through its artifact collections, its publications, its educational programming, its uh, events, its research library. All these things tell that his local history story and make it come alive for current residents. So how did you do on the history quits? This early 1900s kitchen tool is a toaster. A piece of bread was placed between these metal prongs. And once secured, the bread was toasted in the fireplace. Not unlike roasting marshmallows today. It's worth mentioning that almost all of our history quizzes come from the collection at the Montgomery County Historical Society. For a more detailed look at their artifacts, follow curator Joanna Church's blog. It can be found at afinecollection.wordpress.com. Well, that's all the time we have for this show. If you have comments for us or ideas for future shows, send an email to paths.present at verizon.net. Be sure to tune in again next time as we follow more paths to the present. See you then. <laughs> <laughs>